Do you want to start sailing, wondering what boat you should buy first and how you can learn to sail? I was wondering the exact same thing and I did it. So I want to share my experiences in case it might help somebody else wanting to do the same thing. A few years ago before I got a sailboat, I'd really never been on one. We have owned power boats and that helped a little bit, but I watched a lot of those glossy sail around the world videos where no one seems to have a job and they wear their swimsuits all day. But what I really wanted to find was somebody who was just getting started and learning along the way. That's why I made all these videos with my sailboat so other people could see what it was like to start sailing on a little sailboat. You know, I don't like showing my failures, fears, mistakes, or lack of confidence to strangers, but it's part of the experience, so I didn't edit it out. The safest way to learn about sailing would be to be taught by people who know how to do it well. Joining a sailing club or taking sailing lessons is the safest way to get started. People with a sailing background can give you the safest path to learning how to be a sailor. YouTube videos are really great in that you get an idea of what sailing life is like, from sailing kayaks to people sailing around the world like these girls. I think I was like a lot of people watching a lot of YouTube videos, reading a lot of books, and I've been boating for years and have owned a couple power boats, but the thought of getting to the point of taking long voyages on a sailboat with a kitchen and a bathroom meant that I'd better get started soon. Along with watching sailing videos, you can also use a sailing simulator like this eSail simulator with challenges and lessons to help you understand and memorize sailboat parts and techniques. This isn't going to help you understand how to sail on its own, but it could be part of your overall understanding of everything. I kept hearing that sailing was a lot of hard work. Sailing is hard, and it's true, it's not all just sitting there and sailing along. There is a lot to do while you're moving. Maybe on a big boat with autopilot you can just take a nap, but on your first small boat you're going to be working most of the time that it's moving, and then there's taking care of the boat when you're not sailing. Don't take this the wrong way. Sailing can be really rewarding, and along with the fear and mistakes, you'll get a great feeling of accomplishment. Sailboats are slow. This is a really true and important thing to remember, and here's a comparison. To go 10 miles away in my powerboat, I can cruise at a medium speed of about 30 miles an hour or 26 knots. I'll cover 10 miles in 20 minutes. On a sailboat, that same 10 miles might be traveled around 3.5 knots or 4 miles an hour if you're lucky. So the 20 minute trip will now take about 2 hours and 30 minutes. Sailboat people will say that it's all about the journey and I totally agree. It's not about where you're going, but enjoying getting there. I could get to Key West in 8 hours on my powerboat at 30 miles an hour or about one day, but on a sailboat let's say 3.5 knots or 4 miles an hour, it would take about 60 hours and I'd have to put a plus or minus of 12 hours in there just depending on what the wind did. That's close to three days travel just to get there. How do you know what size boat to buy? That depends on what you want to do with the boat. Just sail, take a day trip, a weekend trip, or maybe spend the whole summer on the boat somewhere. A smaller boat is less investment, less maintenance, and less repair time and cost. It's less costly to store and you can trailer it to where you want to sail if it's that small. Having a small boat on a trailer means you can work on it at your own house instead of in the marina or out in the water. Boats under 23 feet can be short on space inside, not great for long trips. They might have a porta potty or maybe a little table to sit at inside the cabin like on our boat, maybe not. Smaller boats have less draft, meaning they don't sit so far under the water. They don't require as deep of water to sail in. Some will have swing keels that you can crank up and down when, so when you're not sailing, it's easier to put it on a trailer or park it next to the beach. Larger sailboats are more comfort for multi-day trips or longer trips, but they have a deeper draft, meaning they need deeper water. They also have complicated systems on them, and in the beginning, you'll want to focus on sailing, not a bunch of other things like fixing all kinds of problems with a big boat. Generally speaking, the length of the sailboat equals the knots of wind it can sail in, so a 22-foot boat 
can sail up to about 22 knots maximum wind. Now, of course, there's probably racers out there who can sail in higher wind, but in general, consider the typical winds where you want to sail and look at sailflow.com, which will show you general winds in your area throughout the year. When you're thinking about which boat to buy, consider where you sail, a lake, a waterway, an unprotected ocean, or a bay. If you'll only sail on a large body of water like an ocean with large waves, a 22-foot boat isn't going to cut it. Maybe you live on a small lake or a small body of water with very light winds and no waves, and a sailing dinghy would be a great way to learn how to sail. I live near the Gulf of Mexico, but the 15-minute trip to the Gulf on our powerboat is like a three-hour round trip to get there and back with our sailboat, so mostly we just sail in the intercoastal waterway. You don't have to be rich to get your first sailboat. Used sailboats can be as little as $1,500 to $4,000 to get you a decent 22 or 23 foot small boat that's ready to sail. And six or $10,000 could get you something bigger, newer, or maybe in a little better shape. You could go big and buy a giant old boat that needs a lot of repair, but I don't recommend this for your first boat. 22 foot boats have some of the same setups as bigger boats and they'll teach you a lot. Don't buy an old boat that needs tons of work. You'll spend more money fixing it up in, in comparison to just getting something nicer that someone else already fixed up. Small boats are popular and they're easy to find for sale. If you're going to hunt for a boat, get this book. A small boat will cost less for storage, fuel, parts, cleaning, and maintenance. They can provide a safe starting point to see if you want to move forward with your new hobby. As far as brands go, popular boats that sold well have a lot of parts available and good information and resources available. The Catalina 22 is a great example. Check out CatalinaDirect.com. Rare boats, you're on your own to figure out things and there might be a reason there weren't so many made to begin with. There are many more considerations and I recommend reading books and understanding the pros and cons to different models. In the end, it might come down to cost and local availability, not what brand you want to buy. You might think you want a big boat to start off with a kitchen and a bathroom, but unless you have a lot of time off to go sailing far away, you're just not going to use those things as much as you think. I recommend getting something that sails like a laser or small catamaran that you can sell a season after learning the basics and then move on to a regular sailboat. You'll probably have a lot more fun sailing that around and it's safer and smaller to start off on. Remember that sometimes the best part of a new hobby is when you're learning how to do it. Enjoy the whole process. Don't look at the end as a goal. See the whole process as the part to enjoy and the mastery of it just icing on the cake. Thanks to a viewer called Jason0770 who commented and suggested I talk about what I learned the hard way about sailing. There are a few specific things I think I really did learn the hard way. Not having a checklist to be sure the boat was ready. Halyards not connected to the sails and then I go to raise the sails and realize I haven't set them up or connected them. Sail ties still on when I was trying to raise the main sail. The sail cover not taken off. So in the beginning, make sure everything is ready and have a checklist that helps avoid looking like a jack wagon when you do things. In the beginning, I had the wrong type of anchor for leaving your boat in the water and the chain kept wrapping around it and following the anchor. I didn't attach the jib hanks on the forest day prior to raising the jib and that was an issue, so I had to learn that the hard way. And also, last, overestimating your skills. Watching YouTube videos is not training your muscle memory. You can watch something a million times, but when you go to do it, it's still going to be the first time you ever did it. Stay tuned for an upcoming video where I'm going to be taking Not Enough out into the Gulf of Mexico for a day sail. Eventually, I'm going to want to sell Not Enough and move to a little bit bigger boat so we can take some longer trips. If anyone is interested in buying Not Enough, you can email me at the address in the description. I'd like to know how you got started in sailing. So in the comments below, share the story of how you got started.